just saw Shazam last night, opening night, and uh, it, it was it was pretty fantastic. I wasn't even planning on reviewing this movie, but I actually enjoyed it so much that I just I wanted to talk about it. And hopefully, someone that's on the fence about watching it or not, maybe you'll go ahead and give it a shot. I am gonna keep this review moist, moist. I am gonna keep this review mostly spoiler free. I'm not gonna touch on anything that's really gonna ruin the movie for you. Anything I talk about is things you would know just from watching the trailers for the movie. But man, I had no idea that opinions on this movie would be so, uh, controversial. I was actually so excited about how much I enjoyed this movie that I posted this tweet immediately after I got out of theater. Unexpectedly, it's getting a lot of traction now. People are liking and retweeting and responding and whatnot. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So I just got out of Shazam, and it was fantastic. It actually blew away Captain Marvel at every level, and I didn't hate Captain Marvel. And the trailer didn't spoil half the movie. Looks like DC is on a winning streak. Now when you post something like this, and you include both a DC and a Marvel movie, in one tweet, a couple of things are bound to happen. And you guys should actually read through the replies if you get a chance. It's, it's uh, quite entertaining. First, you get the angry Marvel fan. I should just say angry fan because these do exist on the DC side as well. These fans only have the ability to choose one side and refuse to enjoy any good comic book movie that belongs to the enemy. So they inevitably just post about how much better Avengers Endgame will be. Okay, so what? Both Marvel and DC have had stinkers, great movies, mediocre movies. Both have had movies that you can easily praise, and both have had movies that you should critique. Another type of fan you attract is the DC Doom and Gloom fan. The one that wants everything dark and gritty, like Batman. Even if it doesn't fit the tone of whatever character that's being represented on screen. And these fans have superior cinema intellect that far surpasses any human below them. And for some reason, from my tweet, certain people only focused on two phrases. And I really didn't think I had to explain any of this, but tweets are limited in how many words you can say. And some people just see the world in black and white. They don't like to put on their thinking caps and use those critical thinking skills that some humans have. Number one, it blew away Captain Marvel. Again, angry fans that I even dared compare the two. I usually don't compare two movies when they're clearly intended to be two completely different style of movies. I, I get that. Captain Marvel and Shazam are simply two different movies. But I think in this case it was fair for me to compare the two because A, they're both Captain Marvels, but that's not as important. Putting that little tidbit aside, they're both movies in the same genre, they're both comic book movies, and I saw them weeks apart. So I was simply saying that I found my theatrical experience of Shazam more entertaining than the one I had for Captain Marvel, which I had just seen recently. Had it been a different comic book movie, I would have compared it to whatever comic book movie I had just seen. Suddenly that comment turns into, I hate Captain Marvel. I actually had someone call me sexist for saying that. <laughs> I, I didn't hate Captain Marvel. If you go back in my tweet history, I actually liked it after I saw it. I just felt that it was missing a lot of things. They both had some great action moments. They both had a decent story, but I felt that Shazam had heart, whereas that's a major thing that Captain Marvel was missing. But yes, this review is about Shazam, so that'll be the, the last comparison I make to Captain Marvel. And number two, I said DC is on a winning streak. So some people just laser focused on that one word, streak, without doing a little bit of thinking on what I may have meant. Like this one, how they on a winning streak off one good movie, LOL. Well, let's fix this real quick. It should be, how are they on a winning streak? That's just proper grammar. And two decent movies ain't touching Marvel, LOL, N-word. I won't say it because I'll get demonetized. Talking about a streak. What's a two-kill streak get you in any game since you a gamer? I didn't think I had to explain this either. Um, I thought Justice League was a dumpster fire. I didn't really enjoy that movie. It just felt like they rushed and just hit all the Marvel checkpoints and called it a day without developing these characters on their own and then putting it all together to excite the audience. It was just a rush job. So since then, Marvel has had, in my opinion, because opinions are not facts, two great movies back-to-back, -back, Aquaman and Shazam. So I feel that DC really had a shift in their mentality. Uh, now, instead of focusing on just a mad dash to catch up to Marvel, now they're kind of slowing down and making really good individual stories first. And they have two movies now back-to-back -back that prove that. And hopefully they continue that trend. Um, I call that a streak. If, if you don't want to call it a streak, uh, I don't know, use a different word. Thinking caps. But talking about Shazam itself, if you're one of those DC fans that um, 
want everything to be gritty, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people are like that. Some people are huge Batman fans or just want everything having a real serious tone. I'm personally not a big fan of that for everything. For Batman, it makes sense. I like whatever tone makes sense for the character and the universe. For Shazam, it's it's goofy, it's over the top, it's humorous. So if you like everything dark and gritty, it's, it's just not the movie for you. You're not going to like it. And in many parts, it actually makes fun of the superhero genre. So it's really self-aware, and it pokes fun at all the different stereotypes and even things that we've seen in other DC movies. It, it's DC making fun of DC in lighthearted ways. Also, because I know someone's going to say it in the comments, I understand he's really called Captain Marvel. In the movie, they call him a million different things besides Captain Marvel. So for the purpose of this review, we're going to call the actual superhero Shazam. His name is Captain Sparkle Fingers. No, it's not. It's not my, it's not my name. This movie is a, a children's uh, power dream. You know that feeling when you're a kid and you just imagine yourself being a superhero and you put on a fake little cape and you pretend you're flying around fighting supervillains? If you never experienced that feeling, you were never a child. Let's be real here. But this movie takes that literally. Of course, Shazam is a little kid. Well, he's 14 in the movie. But essentially, he's a kid and he literally transforms into this adult man with superpowers that has no idea what to do with his superpowers. So this movie takes that idea of you dreaming as a kid being a superhero, and it does such a good job of representing that through a 14-year-old kid's eyes. And on top of that, there were so many hilarious, awkward adult moments. You know, those things that adults should only be able to do. But now that he's in an adult body, he's able to do, but with the mentality of a kid. There's the scene in the trailer where he goes to buy beer. That's just one of several. I'd like to purchase some of your finest beer, please. It actually reminds me of that Tom Hanks movie, Big. Anyone remember that one? Where the kid wakes up and suddenly he's adult Tom Hanks. By the way, there is a clear and direct reference to that movie in Shazam. Keep an eye out for it. It's easy to miss. But with Shazam, it's more than just uh, him not knowing how to use his powers. And also, he doesn't know how to act like a superhero. So you really see this character go on a journey from beginning to end. From being this kid that gets superpowers that just thinks it's super cool. And he's just trying to figure out how to use them. To realizing by the end, this really comes with some responsibility. And if I don't use it wisely, people can actually get hurt. So it's not just a mindless comedy. There's actually some really good character development throughout the movie too. And younger Shazam, Billy Batson. He was one of my favorite things about this movie. And I feel that he's what really separates this from being just another superhero comedy. He's been trying to find his mom since he was lost as a child. And he's been jumping from foster home to foster home. And you really feel for him in some parts. And they did a great job portraying a kid that's just trying to find his place in the world with a family where he can feel wanted. And then you have the supporting cast, the group home he ends up in with a bunch of other foster kids. These kids just grow on you, and that's what makes the movie so great. It, it's got heart. It's got these emotional moments that make you care about the characters on screen, not just the main character. And you know what else? Let me praise DC real quick for not blowing their load on the trailers. I hate movie trailers nowadays. They spoil everything, which is a reason the latest Endgame trailer, I, I refuse to watch it. I, I don't want to see anything else. I can't express how refreshing it was. And again, this is spoiler free, but I can't express how refreshing it was watching Shazam and then seeing several things that are pretty big deals for this movie without the trailer showing any of it. In retrospect, that's how you do a movie trailer. Get people excited enough to go watch the movie but keep your best secrets to yourself. Let people experience it in the movie the first time. I'm looking at you, Amazing Spider-Man 2. But like most movies, Shazam's not perfect, of course. I, I think one um, I think one common problem that comic book movies has is weak villains. And I think this villain in the movie was fairly weak. Great actor. You've got Mark Strong, who also played another DC villain, Sinestro and Green Lantern. He played the part well that he was given. He plays Shazam villain Dr. Savannah. In the comics, at least in the New 52 continuity, which is a more updated version of the character, he's a scientist that wants to save his family from something. Science fails him, so he turns to magic, and it involves Shazam's arch nemesis, Black Adam. And in the process of uncovering Black Adam's secrets, he gets magic lightning to the face. He's half blind with a really cool eyeball, and then he can see magic after that. The movie does change his origins drastically, but it works for the story they're telling in the movie, and he does have that really cool eye still, so I did like that they kept that. While he's not a bad villain, he's not particularly great either. He's just kind of this guy that had a rough childhood, 
dreams of having the ultimate power gets power, then wants more power. <laughs> that That's really all his character boils down to. So, so if there is a weak link in Shazam, it, it definitely is the villain. And he also discovers that Shazam's got these powers, so he wants to steal Shazam's powers so he can get more power. So yeah, run-of-the-mill villain. So overall with Shazam, great characters, great story, truly entertaining from beginning to end, and a semi-weak villain. I do recommend you go check it out over the weekend. I am excited what this means for the the future of the DC Universe, if it does well financially. Because that's how movie studios talk. Their language is money, so that's yet to be seen. So far, critically, it's been doing great, and I, I have to agree, it was awesome. I'm really excited for Wonder Woman 2. The Joker movie, the new trailer just dropped. Um, I'm on the fence on that one. Honestly, from the trailer, it looks kind of boring. But I'll keep an open mind. I'll check it out, and, and hopefully it'll change my mind on that. Birds of Prey, they're making that movie. Um, I, I kind of don't care about that one. but So we'll, we'll see where this all leads uh, down the DC Universe path from here on out. But as of right now, yeah, I think they're on a uh, winning streak. It, it's what they should have done at the beginning. They're, they're in reverse. But hey, you know what? As long as we keep getting good comic book movies, I'm happy. I'll catch you guys later, and remember, fanboyism is bad on all sides. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.